After spending some time performing problem domain analysis, we now know what kind of data our user interface will need to represent virtually. So uh, in this lesson, we will be building the XML layout using a constraint layout. We will also make this process a little bit less painful by using styles, which are very similar to CSS, if you have any experience with that. It's basically going to allow us to set up style information separately from the sort of more structural information of our user interface in XML, and then we'll be able to play around with different uh, colors and styles kind of on the fly. So what we'll do is using the constraint layout, we're going to build like a skeleton of the user interface. Then we'll define what kind of styles we want, and then we'll apply those styles and see how we can kind of mess with them, and that'll basically be it. All right, go ahead and open up the res directory and navigate to layout, and in here you will see we have a file uh, already made called activity main. So I'm just going to click on that, hit shift F6 on Windows at least, and I'm going to change this to activity calculator. You can leave it if you really want, uh, doesn't matter too much. Open up that file. And just be sure that uh, the root tag is of type constraint layout. And uh, yeah, that should be available for you if you did the Gradle imports properly. So immediately, I'm just going to make an ID for the root tag here. So we're going to say Android ID, app plus ID, and we're going to type root main activity, just like that. So we will actually be using a text view, so we can actually go ahead and leave that. But what we're going to be doing uh, right at the start here is we're going to be using some constraint layout guidelines in order to divide our user interface into horizontal sections. So the first section will be, of course, the display of the calculator, and then we'll have all the different rows of buttons and operators for the calculator. Now, uh, why you might be wondering if you have a bit of an Android experience, why aren't we just using a linear layout? Well, there's actually a number of reasons for that. Linear, linear layouts, especially when you nest them, are not necessarily the most efficient thing. But also, using the constraint layout, we're going to have a more flexible end product, because as we're going to see, we're going to be able to have basically just percentages of the uh, width or width and height of the user interface, which the a user interface will kind of conform to. So if that doesn't make any sense, that's okay. Let's just kind of get started building it here. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to actually switch to the blueprint uh, view. And so one thing in for a long time now, uh, Android Studio's uh, design editor has been buggy for me. I can't zoom in or out unless I change to a different device. So I'm going to switch to Nexus 5X and it Oh, no, it's not going to work at all this time, apparently. Well, that's kind of annoying. Are you going to work now? Okay, there we go. I just had to change it back. So if you're having the same issue, that is a known issue in Android Studio, and usually it can be fixed by just switching the uh, different device preview. Anyways, what I'll do now is I'm going to get started adding the constraint guidelines. So what I'll do is I'm just going to right-click here, and I'm going to go to Helpers, and then we're going to type or click rather, add horizontal guideline. And what I'm going to do, so in fairness, I already kind of figured out these percentages ahead of time. So basically what they are is I wanted the uh, display of the user interface to be something roughly like a fifth, but a little bit smaller of the user interface. And then I wanted to divide evenly the rest of the interface for all of the buttons. I didn't want the display to be really big because I have reasonably large fingers and I prefer to have larger buttons. So what we'll do here is we're just going to click this thing. I'm going to open up the attributes panel here and close the project explorer. And we're going to want to drag this thing to... Actually, instead of that, we're just going to click on it until it turns into percentage mode because I think it's in uh, pixel mode here. Uh, nope. There we go. Okay, so we want to see this percentage thing, as you can see here. And we're just going to click and drag that down to 16%, which again, that's just something I kind of figured out ahead of time. And then we're going to add a couple more different constraint guidelines. So uh, the next guideline is going to be at 37%. So again, we're going to go to Helpers, Add Horizontal Guideline. I'm assuming it added that to the top. Yep, there it is. Wow, the uh, design editor is really 
buggy lately. <laughs> this is pretty horrendous. Okay, so again, we're just going to click on this little blue button here to cycle it so that it's in percentage mode. And what did I say before? Uh, it's going to go down to 37% of the screen. Uh, I'm going to add another one, and it looks like it's going to add it to the top of the screen again, probably. Horizontal guideline. Any time now. There we go. All right, and this one's going to be at 58%. Almost got it right there. Okay, we're going to add another one. And this will be our last guideline. There we go. And our final guideline will be at 79%. There we go. So as you can see, we have our screen all divided up. So the display is a little bit smaller and then we divvy up the remaining size evenly across the various buttons, which we'll be including in the user interface. All right, so now that we have the guidelines set, we can start to drag the various views onto the user interface and try to position them properly. So I'm just gonna click on this uh, text view, which was automatically edited if uh, So I'm just going to click on this text view, which was added automatically, and I'm just going to remove all of the constraints on it. Oh, there it goes. Actually, it's easier to do, to do that over here. And I'm just going to click and drag it if the editor will let me. There we go. Roughly where I want it. And then I'm also going to add a button to this particular uh, part of the constraint. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to constrain both of these views to the top of the uh, parent or the screen, and then the bottom will be constrained to the horizontal guideline. I'm going to constrain the start of the button to the start of the parent here. That didn't really work. So sometimes clicking and dragging with the uh, editor here doesn't really work very well. Uh, usually an easier way to do it or a way that's more successful is you can just click on the plus icon in the uh, attribute panel here and usually that will actually connect it to where you want it to go. So we're just going to do that. Uh, we're going to hit zero for uh, margin there. Let me just double check if that's actually what it's supposed to be. <clears throat> yes, that's correct. No, it is not. That is supposed to be a margin of 16. That sounds a little more reasonable. So what we're going to need to do here is um, if I just kind of connect these two views here and set them to match constraints, then we're going to get some pretty weird behavior in terms of their uh, width. So yeah, that's got a huge margin. That's not what I want there. Let's set that to 16. So what I basically want to do here is I would like to make it, so actually let me just uh, set that to match constraints here. So as you can see, upon setting these two views to match constraints, um, we have some pretty bizarre distribution of uh, sizes. So what we need to do is we're actually going to set pretty much the constraint weight of these two views. So we're actually going to hop into the XML editor to do that. So I'm just going to go to text. And the particular thing that we want to add in here is we're going to type app. And then we're going to say, let me just find it here for the button. So it's going to be app layout constraint horizontal. See, it's not showing up for me here, horizontal weight. There we go. So this is just like weight in uh, a linear layout. Um, what I'll do is I'll just type it in and then I'll kind of show you how it works. So we've got that set up and then we're going to type for the button, I want it to be a weight of one. And then we're gonna add in that same option to our text view. Definitely gonna have to rearrange this XML document as expected. And in here, we're going to want to make that four. So that should have kind of resized our different views the way we want them. I see it hasn't quite yet. 
Okay, so I was wondering what the hell is going on. I think I ac accidentally um, hit Control uh, X instead of Control C, so that's a little bit more like it. That was uh, confusing for a minute. Okay, so this is roughly how we want things distributed. I'm just going to make sure that the margins are all correct. So uh, we don't want any hor any vertical margins for either of these views. So for both of them, I'm just going to set these to zero. Uh, we want a margin of 16 at the start of the button, but a margin of zero at the end there. And then for our uh, display text view here, we're going to remove the margin at the end there. And that's basically about how I want it. Um, there's going to be some more things that we're going to tweak in terms of uh, styles. So for example, we're going to want the, the uh, text to be centered and we're going to change what's uh, we're going to change the text of our button here. Let's actually just go ahead and do that. So we want a let's see here is that a capital? Yes, that'll be a capital X to represent delete. So I'm just going to type X. Now it's probably going to do this weird thing where it's not going to let me even type that. Yeah. Again, Android Studio sometimes it's really stupid. Uh, let's just go into the XML editor and type the thing I want. So for text here, we're just going to type X. What it's trying to do is it's trying to get me to input some kind of string resource, and it's not allowing me to just type something directly in there. But that's okay. We got it sorted out. Okay, so that's pretty much all we need to do for this top row here, other than the general styles. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start positioning all of the various buttons uh, for each row of our calculator display. Before I do that, our XML file is going to get really messy here. So I'm just going to do a little bit of work ahead of time to move these views roughly where I want them to go. I'm going to make some space between the guidelines in our XML layout. This is more of an aesthetic uh, sort of legibility concern. Basically, we can position these elements where wherever we want, and it isn't especially important in the uh, in a constraint layout. Of course, a view which is lower in the XML editor uh, in terms of the line position will be rendered on top of whatever view is above it. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but in this particular case, we don't have any overlapping views, so this is totally fine. Anyways, uh, let's get busy adding a whole bunch of buttons in here. So I'm just going to click and drag a whole bunch of them, and then we'll have to do some work to rename them and get them set up properly. So I'm just going to click and drag, and we'll just do a couple of buttons. That'll be four in total. There we go. And it doesn't matter that they're not lined up especially well. And then let's just go ahead and add in the other ones. This is the part of programming which I'm <laughs> not especially a huge fan of. I'm much more of a back-end guy than a user interface guy, but uh, this is less annoying than how we used to have to do it uh, way back in like 2016 with this kind of thing. And also I do really appreciate the constraint layout, that's for sure. Okay. So as you can see, we have four buttons per row. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to get them set up properly in terms of their constraints. So what we can do is I'm going to get them all set up vertically. Let's just hit the uh, vertical buttons here. Oh, that didn't work properly. Come on now. <laughs> Maybe I'm not going to do that. You know, this is just kind of the issue with... Uh, I know I keep complaining about this, but Android Studio's editor... Most of the time it's great, but sometimes it just does some really silly stuff. I'm not even sure if that's constrained to the correct thing here. Let's just double check. That's supposed to be constrained to the constraint. Okay, so I'll just have to double check if that's working properly, but that should be sufficient for now. Okay, so just to speed things up, we're going to use another option uh, in the helper menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these buttons. Now I'm going to click on the first one, then I'm going to hold shift, which will allow me to select multiple different views at the same time. Right click on one of them, and then we're going to type, or click rather, uh, create a horizontal chain. So that's basically going to constrain all of these different views to each other 
and it should uh, distribute them roughly equally. Now these buttons are basically going to be uh, borderless, so we can pretty much uh, remove all of the margins between them, and we want them to kind of take up the maximum screen real estate possible. And uh, while we're at it, let's just uh, make them match constraints as opposed to wrap content. And as you can see here, that's starting to look a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to skip ahead in the video because I'm sure you're probably getting bored watching this, and I'll just skip ahead until I've done the same thing to all of these different rows. Okay, so as you can see here, I've just gone through and I've made everything set to uniform constraints. So just to make sure you're on the same page here, we have no margin for any of these buttons, and the horizontal and vertical constraints are set to match constraints. And what this will do is it should resize very well to multiple different screen sizes. Anyways, what we're going to do next is we're going to go through and rename all of these buttons appropriately, and then because I'm OCD, we're going to go through and basically position them more reasonably in the XML file, because they will probably be in a completely random order. So the first thing I'll do is, again, I'm just going to go through and name all of these things appropriately. So I'm going to type, uh, so I'm going to name them according to what will be shown on the calculator display. Okay, so the first one is going to be BTN7. Now you need to make sure that when you're renaming these things that the ID is actually renaming them in all places that they are used, otherwise it will completely break your constraint layout. So I'm just going to type BTN7 and hope that the ID will pop this message up. So it uh, has a message here, update use usages. Just go ahead and click yes. We want it to update all of the XML and Java R field references and so what you can do next is just go ahead and go through all of these different uh, buttons and you're going to want to rename the ID and then also head down to the text attribute somewhere here and in the text attribute you're going to want to type whatever the appropriate uh, number is so again oh, it looks like if I hit tab I can actually type it in there so that's good so yeah, just go ahead and of course it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then on the bottom, let me just double check from the other application. Um, on the bottom, it's going to be 0, decimal, equals. And then on this side here, it's going to be plus, minus, multiply, divide. Uh, we'll see what it looks like in a minute. Okay, so I've added in all the appropriate names and text attributes. Uh, if you want to see what they are, you can just go ahead and hop into the uh, source code, link in the resources down below. Uh, also going to rename this text view here, so this is going to become LBL display. LBL stands for label, it's just an old habit I have, but again, you can name it whatever you like. Uh, and then this is going to be btn delete. So that's basically it for the uh, structure of this particular XML document. So what I'll do now is I'm going to click on the uh, design view. And as you can tell here, it's like really horribly ugly. So what we'll work on next is adding the style information to our layout here. Okay, so now that we have the kind of general structure set up, which is similar to like the HTML in web development, uh, what we're going to look at next is setting up the styles. So I'm going to have a different style for buttons basically in this vertical column. Uh, we'll use the same style for all the buttons in these vertical columns. And of course we'll have a style for the display and the style, a style for the delete button. Now one quick little tip here. If you have uh, just a single element, for example, like a LBL display here is only going to show up once in this application. Same thing for the delete button. You don't really need to make an extra style for it, but I'm just going to do that because I feel like it. So what we'll need to do is I'm going to hit Control shift n and I'm going to type styles, and we'll open up styles.xml. I'm also going to open up colors.xml because we will be messing with that. So the first thing I'm going to change is for our primary theme here, I'm going to set this to no action bar because our application won't need an action bar. And the next thing we'll do here is I'm going to type item name, and this name is going to be Android 
window background, which is pretty self-explanatory. And for this, we're going to type uh, color black. Uh, just we're, So one thing you can do is you can type like at Android to get some sort of pre-made resources. In this case, we're going to type at Android colon color slash black. And that should be reflected. Yep, that's basically what we want going on there. Now the background of the window is black. And now what we can do is we can get started creating the various uh, styles for particular views. So the first one that we're going to make is we're going to type style and it's going to be for name button number path. So that will be like the first three vertical columns. And we're also going to give this thing a parent. So this is just another form of inheritance. We're going to be inheriting style, styles from a parent. So we're going to type widget.appcompat.button.borderless.colored, as you can see here. So what this is going to do is it's just going to inherit some particular attributes which we want to see in our borderless buttons. Anyways, uh, let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to type item Android text color. And the text color for our widgets is going to be, again, we'll use the Android resource for white. There we go. I'm just going to hit Control-D a couple times. So the next one we have is text size. So for the numbers, we're going to go ahead and set that to 34 SP. That should make them fairly large, as you can see here. Uh, next thing we'll do is this is going to be font family. So if you're wondering how to use like Roboto fonts, this is how we set that with the font family. And in this case, we're just going to type sans serif. That should be sufficient. And then finally, we're going to have some background resources. So we're going to type Android background. So we're actually going to create a custom drawable. So the reason why I'm making this drawable is I want to set a specific ripple background. Uh, which will show up when the user presses any one of these buttons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Alt-1 to open up the Project Explorer. And in the Drawable folder, I'm going to create a XML resource. So this one is going to be, so we type, we right-click on the Drawable folder, go to Drawable Resource File. Uh, so this one is going to be called Background BTN Number Pad. And uh, we are going to change that, though, to a ripple. And what we're going to need to do is we'll need to define a color for the ripple. So what we're going to do is we are going to type Android color, and that's going to be color accent. So that'll set the ripple to a particular color, but we can also add like a background color, which is something we'll want to do. So in this case, we're going to type item Android drawable for the background drawable of the button. And that is, hold on, something's not, no, that's correct. Okay, Android drawable, and that's gonna be color primary dark. And we can actually just make that a closing tag like that. Okay, so that's that. Let's just go ahead and create some more of these background ripple drawables for the other things that we'll require. So I'm gonna hit Control C on our background BTN number pad. I'll hit Control V on the drawable folder. Uh, the next one is going to be background btn op for operator, so plus, minus, divide, whatever. It doesn't matter too much what you call it. I'm going to hit control V again, and this one is going to be background btn delete. And those are all of our background drawables. Let's just uh, adjust them a little bit. So for the button operator here, um, instead of doing the color primary dark, we're actually just going to make this the color black, like so. And for the delete button, which I see I totally misspelled the word delete, delete. That's uh, some great English there. What we're going to do for that is uh, we're not actually going to have any kind of background drawable whatsoever. It's just going to be the ripple color accent. So I can go ahead and close that XML tag there. And that's all we need for our custom ripple drawables. So I'm just going to go ahead and close those. 
and hop back into styles here. And of course for button number pad we can go ahead and add that reference to our drawables here. So that's going to be at drawable btn number pad like so. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to finish off all of these styles for the uh, other widgets, and then we'll play around with them a little bit more. Okay, so I've copied and pasted in the other styles from the complete project. Again, at this point, I suggest you do the same because this is some pretty repetitive stuff. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to actually apply these styles to the views in our XML layout. As you can see, that hasn't happened yet. And how we'll do that is we need to use the style attribute. Okay, so for the first one here, we're going to type style equals, and this is going to be text view display. And as you can see, that has changed things over a little bit. Don't worry, we'll mess with the colors in a minute. Uh, and then the next thing we can do, I'm just going to copy and paste this in here. So this is going to be our delete button, so that will be button delete. There we go. Okay. And the next one for our buttons. So how this is going to work is the first three, I've, I've kind of gone ahead and rearranged this XML document so that it actually reflects what we see on the screen a little bit better. So under each guideline will be the row below it. So for the first three, we want to copy and paste in uh, what will be button number pad and then for the fourth button in each row we're going to want to make it the button number operator or whatever the heck I called it. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do all of the number pad buttons first and then I'll go through and do the operator buttons. Just think that'll be a little bit faster. Okay, and then for the operator buttons, we're going to paste that in, and this is going to be button operation. That shouldn't say operation, that should say operator, I think, but whatever. I guess mathematical operation, that almost makes sense. And we'll just go ahead and paste that in. Ah, uh, the power of copy and paste. And that should be everything, so let's just have a quick look at our user interface. Okay, so that's about what I want, but I just want to make some adjustments to the colors because we actually just used the default colors which were generated when the project was created. So we're just going to hop into colors.xml and I'm going to add these in here. So color primary is going to be 616161, which is kind of a darkish gray, maybe a mid gray. And then we're also going to do 212121, which is basically like a deep charcoal gray. Uh, for color accent, we're going to do 82B1, oops, B1FF, which is like a light blue for contrast. Okay, now that that's set up, let's just hop back into our layout. Okay, that's looking a lot better. I see I did miss one thing here. We do want a 16 dip margin just at the end so the text isn't squished up against the screen, but uh, that should be basically everything we need. Uh, I'm just going to double check that I didn't forget anything, and then we'll uh, carry on. Okay, it looks like we're pretty much good to go here. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the text from our text view here. So I'm just going to scroll down and find where the text is, because we don't want it saying hello world. There we go. So that's it for a lesson on layouts and constraint layout and chains and constraint weight and styles and colors and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So uh, I do apologize. Teaching this kind of stuff is really boring and tedious, but this is the kind of thing that we have to do as Android developers, user interface type work. So hopefully it wasn't too painful for you, but uh, that should probably be the longest video in this whole lesson series. And uh, good on you if you made it through. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next lesson.